Hey guys, Ellie here and very excited to bring you a performance related topic that is using placeholder images on your web pages. You might have seen them on many websites and maybe never realized what they are or what they achieve. So we are going to bridge that gap today with the introduction in this video and coding and analyzing activity in Chrome developer tools in the next. First question would and should be what are placeholder images? Placeholder images are plain images with low resolution and very small file size. Small file size is the key since that is the key reason we are using them and I shall explain how to do that. So how are they used? Well, when a page starts to render and browser sees an image tag, instead of our regular image, we give browser a placeholder image to render or display to the user instead. The main image is downloaded in the background. When the final image is fully downloaded and ready to be displayed, we replace the placeholder with the actual image. Since you can't scream at me, but a voice inside your head is asking you to do so because we use the word performance in the start. And in reality, we have added another image to the list of images to be downloaded. We already have our plate full with tons of images to download. And that guy is asking to download even more and has the audacity to say that we are trying to improve performance. He's crazy. Let's watch some other videos made by a sensible person instead. Well, Makes sense, but please hold off until the next slide. So true, we have an additional overhead and we are increasing size of our page. But note our users are not concerned with size of the page. They want quick results and fast response. And if used properly, placeholders have the potential to deliver. Of course, subject to the context of usage. Let me explain. If you have a big web page, which is going to take its sweet time to be fully ready, the best you can do is give your users a sense of activity. And any activity is better than no activity. Placeholders are small in size, get downloaded instantly, and user sees the web page building up on the screen. Secondly, as a nice little trick, you can use the same placeholder in multiple image tags. This means one downloaded file would be used to occupy multiple locations, and your web page would take shape on the screen really quickly. If you are careful with width and height usage, your final image would replace the placeholder with zero flickering or layout shifts. Remember, you can reuse same placeholder file, but with varying height and width in multiple image tags. The file itself can be a static image or a little JFM animation, which would act as kind of a progress bar. Progress bars definitely work, even if without a percentage remaining, they are much, much more effective than nothing. Rather than using a single placeholder, you can always use a blurry image of your actual image. This works if your final image is a full HD resolution image that might take forever to download on a slow or laggy network, which are more common than you think. Even if your users are subscribed to a fast internet, the actual speed depends on a lot of factors like shared bandwidth, signal strength, and whatnot. Giving them a blurry or low resolution but readable image first is a good technique to get them started early and then replacing with the high-res image once it's fully available. Your user would be happy to start with a low-resolution website quickly and would be even more happy as it keeps getting crisper and better. And finally, the biggest benefit, if used properly, you can use placeholders to optimize the above-the-fold rendering or display of first visible area of your web page. How? Let's say you combine the power of placeholders with that of lazy loading. Two advantages here. Note that even with lazy attributes set on images, browsers like Chrome are greedy and try to download images at least on the next page on immediate scroll. Multiple images downloading at the same time usually choke the entire network and to make things even worse, they choke the bandwidth required by render blocking resources like CSS or script files. And that can mean zero progress as the user sits there staring at the blank screen with zero activity. I'll show you what I mean in the next video. Every proper website or web page would have this problem. And here placeholders make a difference of night and day. Don't believe me? Just wait until the coding part and you will. All right, enough benefits. What's the catch? Well, the catch is you would need to step out of your comfort zone and do a bit of scripting. But is it such a big deal? No, a very, very basic scripting is required here. Unless you landed on this video directly, the video is part of yet another full stack development course playlist on this channel, so a ton of scripting is headed your way anyway. This is absolute basic and minuscule, and what should get some adventure anyway. 
and you're a smart person, if I could learn it, you definitely can. All right, enough explanation about placeholders, and we are about to start with our next video on coding. But just let me clarify that we are, would be going to be demonstrating static image-based placeholder usage only in that video. If you use any social media websites which require scrolling, you would have seen a grayed out lines animation as placeholder. This is really common, but requires more CSS to make, which hardly anyone does as most people tend to download pre-built animations to use on their pages. The principles of placeholders don't change with that. So for our demonstration, I'll stick to a static image based demo. You can always use a GIF placeholder if not CSS. And by the way, that is called CSS skeleton animations. You can look that up. Right, in the next video, we shall use Visual Studio Code and Chrome developer tools to look at all this unsubstantiated ta talk in action, and you would see the results unfold in front of your very eyes. Like and subscribe to unlock the practice session. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.